So I got an update video for you. So I've got the Allison going, uh, getting through the research and development stage of putting it in the truck, which sucks. That is the worst part about it. I hate this part of the build, but if you don't do this part of the build right, the rest of the build will go horrible. So doing the little research and development, I realized um, and physically counted and verified that the Allison output shaft out of apparently all of them in a Chevy transmission or the GM truck is a 29 spline. Well, I have a 32 spline drivetrain, so I'm going to have to make some adjustments. So I'm going to end up losing the 203 out of my doubler, which is fine because uh, I'm going to go with an underdrive box, a Magnum underdrive from off-road design. Um, it, yeah, I could order that in the 29 spline. It bolts right up to the six bolt Chevy and uh, everything's going to be good to go there. No issues. So the before I even get into the rebuild of this this transmission, I realized that I had a problem. And that problem was is everything for the Allison is a, a lot more expensive to include a socket that fits this spanner nut specifically. This is the output shaft nut that's on the very back of the transmission and uh it's not a typical it's a spanner and it's not a not a hex so you got to have a special socket that socket's a hundred dollars um and everybody's really proud of that so everybody's got a hundred dollar socket for sale that i'm going to use maybe once or twice if i used it three times i'd be shocked but i'm not doing that so i looked up online and apparently it's the same distance between these little spans for this this is a, a kd tools ford axle hub socket for a four-wheel drive i don't know if it's a dana 44 or what i'm assuming it's a 44 because the dana 60 is pretty beefy and it's pretty much bigger than this so this is a kd tools part number kd 2467 socket and what I had to do is I had to take it to an off-road shop and had him cut the end off and extend the socket for me um, and put it back together. So I still have half-inch drive. They just extended the socket so I could get it all the way over the output shaft and to engage these little teeth right here. The other problem I was having once I got that done today, which was $20. So who knows what this cost me in 2004 when I bought it. Uh, but for $20, I have the socket that works. But the main issue is obviously this. So if you look at this thing, it's got a beveled side here, which goes on the transmission side. And then this is the actual aft part that you'll actually be wrenching against. So the biggest issue here is getting the spline engagement. So getting this to sit all the way down and against the socket. So the socket, these spans are correct, which is fine. But I ended up having to trim the teeth down a little bit, which you can see here. You can see right there where I had to trim the teeth in half a little bit. Now, this isn't, it only gets torqued down there at like 100 inch pounds, or I'm sorry, 100 foot pounds. So I'm going to test the socket out, make sure it still works. But I've got the one special tool that you really need for an Allison transmission rebuild in my garage cost me 20 bucks and I already had it in my toolbox for the most part. I just had to do a little modification. If I had a welder, I would have done it myself. Uh, I would have went out and got a piece of pipe and did it myself, but I don't. I just moved, so I don't, and I don't own a welder. I've never owned a welder. I can weld. I've just not owned one. So special tool requirement is has been met. Um, but other than that, again, I'm going to be getting rid of my NV4500 set up which is good I do it now because I haven't actually done anything with the drive shafts. So I don't have to worry about now I got to redo my drive shafts because I'm putting a different transmission in. So that's, you know, two drive shafts getting reworked. But so quick update, but again, KD tools, two, four, two, four, six, seven. For those aficionados out there who are trying to rebuild their own Allison, which by the way, there's a video on YouTube um out there it's about an hour and 15 minutes and it is probably the most comprehensive video i've ever seen on a transmission rebuild for 
anything, let alone, and it, it, it's the Allison, so that works out. And, it, and that transmission they rebuilt is a six-speed like mine. So um, I may I may link it here, here, down there. I don't know. I don't know if I'll link it at all. Um, I don't know. I don't generally share a lot of content like that. I mean, I want to be helpful, but again, I don't generally do that kind of stuff. But I, if I can, I will link it. Um, and if anybody's in the market, I'm going to have some transmission and transfer case parts for sale. Um, some harder to find stuff. Uh, I'm going to have, when I put the Allison on the back of the Cummins, I got to buy a new engine adapter uh, and a flex plate and a torque converter and all that stuff for the Allison to go up to the 12 valve Cummins. So from the adapter to the bell housing, the clutch throw out bearing input all that stuff that's dodged in the front half of my transmission plus the transmission plus the 203 will be for sale um i'll probably just throw it on ebay and see what happens um but yeah so that's the update for now thanks for watching